Wow, wasn't that, I mean, uh, that's so good. Wasn't it so good? Oh, God. Anyways, I just, I can't stop talking about it. It's the, uh, I think it's their best episode, maybe. It's one of the best episodes ever. Um, anyways, all right, let's bring out um, this cast and the creators. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay, so we're going to start with one of the busiest guys in show business. He's also one of the nicest men ever. Uh, and he's also the director of Love, Simon, which you, if you haven't seen it, please go see Love, Simon. Uh, this is executive producer Greg Berlanti. He has 50 shows on the air right now. You might be familiar with one of them. Um, but uh, next I'm going to bring out uh, his father created Archie Comics, which is insane. I mean, that's, uh, that's so, you know, incredible. Uh, but we have John Goldwater, executive producer. And then he was in jail, but now he's out and he's back with the serpents. Uh, we have Skeet Ulrich. Um, <laughs> this, this lady just played Mrs. White in Carrie the Musical. She also has a biker past that I'm obsessed with. Um, Machen Amick. Uh, sh this... <laughs> Um, this lady left the Pussycats uh, behind um, and is now kind of being stalked by Cheryl, not really, um, <laughs> but also could be Kevin Keller's uh, sister in, in some kind of weird, uh, weird future. Uh, Ashley Murray. Uh, he's the narrator of Riverdale, and he is... Uh, <laughs> And he's, he's the Ughead for Bughead. Um, Colt Sprouse. <laughs> and <laughs> she, she's the B in Bughead. <laughs> And her mom just took, took her mom just took her wig away, which I'm so upset about. Lily Reinhardt. And she loves she loves her Archikins, but she also loves her parents. Camila Mendez. Um and this next actor, this, we wouldn't have the show really without uh, this guy. He's made me rethink uh, my love of gingers. Um, <laughs> KJ Appa. And... <laughs> And last week, last we saw this actress in this week's episode, she was being shipped off to a mental hospital with a crazy nun. And now she's singing and dancing. Madeleine Pesch. Um, and this next actress, I would vote for her for mayor solely based on her hair, because it's that good. Marisol Nichols. And uh, this man's a legend. Uh, he, was, he, was, he was shot in the beginning of the season, but now he's back and running for mayor. Luke Perry. And then this man, we really wouldn't have, we would not have Riverdale without him. Uh, this is the showrunner and the executive producer, the developer of this whole thing, Roberto Aguirre Sacasa.
Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That's all the time we have. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, wait, no, let's talk, let's dive into this episode to start. Um, and again, let's, you know, try and don't, don't spoil it for people that haven't seen it um, yet online if you can. But Roberto, tell me, what made you decide to do this? This is a very, I mean, it's a big thing to take on, uh, to do a musical episode of television. Yeah, it was something we, we talked about even in season one to do uh, a musical episode. And we, we, we ran out of time and we were doing uh, the second season and we'd planned to do the musical halfway through the season and then you know we kept pushing it we kept pushing it and we kind of came to a moment of truth where it was like okay we're either doing it now or not doing it um so everyone everyone really rallied and 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 uh uh we pulled together a huge production huh. uh uh kind of close to the end of the season uh uh so it was sort of a now or never moment yeah. um but i think it really energized everyone who was working on it, the director, Jason Stone, the writers, Arabella, and Tessa, and the cast, and, and everything. So it really brought everything together. And when you first auditioned all these people, like, for the original, you know, the original pilot, did you know that they had singing abilities? Because they're all, like, pop stars. This is, like, a real... <laughs> I think, I think the incredible. only person who sang was Ashley, and then KJ played the guitar. Right. But I don't think anyone else sang. Wow. So it was we and we asked, I think, but 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 yeah, we we didn't know there'd be that much singing. Yeah. What other secret talents do we have on stage? Like, does anyone, like, can someone juggle? Like, are there juggling abilities? Or uh, Luke, you can juggle a little bit. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. It took me a while. But <laughs> next time, I'm bringing them. <laughs> like yeah. magic tricks. Okay, cool. Uh, Greg, you guys have done you've done musical episodes before, unlike The Flash. Uh, what did you think when Roberto came to you with this idea? Were you were you excited? Were you wary? What did you sort of think of it? I. Love a good musical episode. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to convince me. I, I loved his take on it, too, just the fact of doing Carrie, which was, you know, not incredibly well-received when it first uh, premiered, but he had a love for it, and it really just fit so well with the, um, the characters and the storylines they were doing. And, and I think it's sort of given its due with the show, which is what's also so nice if you love musical theater. Yeah. And for the cast, what was this like? Because... You not only would, you know, would have to learn your lines and, and you know, blocking for direction, but you had to learn choreography, you had to learn the score. What was that like to shoot? Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not tough. musical. It was really hard. Um, <laughs> the choreography was the most challenging Relax. part for me. <laughs> 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 Juggling the songs was difficult, but we all, we all came to, yeah. It was nice. I think it was really fun. I had a blast doing it. I think it was like a really fun and rewarding thing to do, especially after 17 episodes of Riverdale to like kind of stop that for a minute and do this like kind of crazy elated version of Riverdale where we all get to sing and dance, which are things that we like to do anyways. Uh, it was really fun for us. And all of us came together and got to work together for the first time in a while, which was really fun. Was there one number that was the hardest one to sort of pull off? Because that one in the dressing room looks like a single, that looks like a single shot. That, I, I'm not in this thing, but I gotta tell you, when I watched that, that's photograph, that's brilliant, man. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the way you want that stuff to come down. Yeah. And that's, these guys all doing it in real time on the day, and Jason being able to, yeah. I, was, I was impressed. Was that the hardest one for you guys? Uh, we have, we have different we, opinions. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The night we won't forget the one where we're- The ending one. Yeah, the, in the, dressing the end. Room. But but even not I that. think the I chair one was dancing, hard. So the whole oh my god! We were like on chairs. We were falling in the chair. One. We all really had to be in sync <laughs> for that one, and I don't really know that we were. No, you're great. I love. <laughs> I don't think we were. <laughs> I love a chair dance, like Britney Spears, Stronger, <laughs> oh Lover, <my> <laughs> Crazy. Your chair dancing is on par with her, I would say. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's excellent. Oh, okay. um, but Cole, you kind of alluded to this, but did you have FOMO at all about missing out on, <laughs> on singing? Did you, were you like, were you pushing for Jughead to have like, a, like an aria or like a, some kind of, you know? <laughs> Ave Maria. Um, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't sleep for nights afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. I, yeah. And I hate it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Luke, did you you had FOMO too? No, oh. I was just saying the the song that they cut. He sang to Fred, yeah. and I thought it was awesome. And then yeah. they cut it. It was a, it was oh, a what beautiful. And the lodges had a whole tango yeah. number that oh, just, yeah. Yeah. got yeah. cut, but the tango was fun to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marisol, or not Marisol, sorry, Madeline. Um, uh, Madeline, what was it like being covered in blood for the, the climactic moment? Was it, is that corn syrup, like, like it Carrie? It was sticky. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, as 
wasn't sticky. I had to have my, there was a bar they had to put up for me to hold my arms up between takes because my arms would get stuck to my sides. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, there's photos. I'll put them out when the episode airs. I'm like this, waiting for the next shutup. It was very fun. Yeah. It's a blasty blast. The shower afterwards was sweet relief. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And Roberto, it seems like Chuck is having a comeback now. He seems to be on the road to um, redemption. Is that, is that something we can, we'll maybe see in the next, the, towards, for the rest yeah, of the season? Yeah, I, I love that actor who plays Chuck Jordan. Um, and and uh, he's been such a great villain for us. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think we, we want him to be able to do more stuff on the show. So, so part of this story was to redeem him because he's so great and I think he'd be great with the gang. Yeah. yeah. And he was a great dancer, too. Yeah. He was a great dancer. <laughs> right now. I got yeah. secret talents. Um, John, your father founded Archie Comics, which again, that's so cool. What do you think your dad would think of Riverdale? I mean, Riverdale obviously is, is still very faithful to, to the comics, but then is very modern though. Um, but what would he think of this show, do you think? I mean, I think he'd be shocked, uh, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, but I also think he'd be thrilled, yeah. you know, like to see these, this great cast and like, they're alive, man. It's like, I don't think he ever in his, in his wildest dreams thought that, you know, that that would ever happen. But, uh, you know, the show's about family, the show's about friendship, yeah. and that's really what Archie was founded on. So I think, you know, the DNA of, of the comic books and the DNA of the show are the same. So I think he'd really be, he'd really be thrilled about that whole thing. Yeah. Roberto, is that something that you guys go back and forth on, like how, how far you can modernize it, but then also, you know, stay true to, the comics is that one of the kind of the biggest challenges yeah we we we, we talk about it all the time in the writer's room we, we talk about i talk about it with john goldwater john every almost every day um um about pushing the envelope with certain things but always um coming back to milkshakes in the booth yeah. at pops yeah. and 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 you know we we tell so many mystery and crime and horror stories on the show that it's that it's nice something like the musical yeah. to tell stories that are mostly about friendships and the relationships and stuff and uh but but you know the romances are a huge part of the show as they were on the comic and and that keeps us true to them i think yeah so let's talk about season two um uh go back to the beginning of this did you know like when we when we wrapped up season one and fred was shot by the assailant did you know at that point that that person was the black hood and that would be the next year's kind of mystery you know we were we were getting ready to shoot uh uh that scene where, where Fred is, um, is attacked and pops. And we talked about different kinds of masks and uh, uh, there's this character in, the, in, in one of the Archie comic books uh, called the Black Hood. Mm. He's sort of a vigilante. And sort of the day of, we sort of said, does anyone have a black ski mask? Let's put him <laughs> in a black ski mask. And, uh, and, and maybe we can tell uh, uh, the Black Hood story. And we wanted yeah. to do something that was felt like Zodiac, but in a small town, mm -hmm. and, and follow that through the points of view of the kids of the town. So, so we did, we did uh, uh, it was towards the end of season one, but yeah, we had an idea about it. And Luke, I remember, I think I talked to you about this, but you didn't know if you were like, a, gonna die or not. Really. Like, you were sort of in the, in, you were kind of <laughs> not unsure, right? Like it was kind of a mystery. Many things on our show are a mystery. <laughs> 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 That's fair to Very say, true. right? Very Safe true. to say. And one of the things about doing any type of mystery television in today's world with all the social media and all the ways that that story can get out is, you know, we really got to lock this stuff down and, yeah. and keep it precious and keep it cool. Because we, we work hard to create it and we want it to have its full effect for you and surprise. So we, we really oftentimes don't say anything. And part of that is sometimes they don't always share the information with us. But I will say, in, in absolute candid, Roberto was very, he kept saying, we're not going to kill you. <laughs> and I kept saying, it's okay, Roberto. It's fine. People die. It's going to happen. You know, I, yeah. I saw Game of Thrones. I know how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, he, he's, got a, he's got a long-term plan for this thing. And I, yeah. I believe him. So, yeah. And KJ, you and I talked to this, about this on set, I think. But you, um, this is really, I mean, this storyline is really, I think given Archie so much, so many more layers and depth and really darkness so much. I mean, he really, you know, you go back to the red circle and um, has, how's that been for you to play? Has that been, has that been fun to sort of see more of Archie? Yeah, it's been really good. I, um, that first season was real. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we didn't really get to uh, explore that side of Archie in the first season, so. Uh -huh. To have that material this time has been really good. It's been challenging, and um, it's been really good. 
Yeah. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, my other question, Roberta, this is probably for you, or maybe you all can answer it. Is there a CrossFit in Riverdale? Is there a... <laughs> um, the, the cast Pilates. is very fit. Is there like a Tracy Anderson method? There's, there there's, a, there's a, definitely, uh, there's definitely. Is there a soul yeah. cycle? Yeah, there's a soul cycle. <laughs> is, it like, is, it, is it like cycle soul, like how they yeah, always exactly, like, exactly, instead of, exactly. instead of, it's, exactly. it's like Shankshaw instead yeah. of Shawshank? Okay. I just didn't know, yeah, because it's, it's a very no, fit cast. But isn't that great, Shankshaw, Spiffany's, yeah, I love it. it's, it's right. just brilliant. I know, who come, do you guys have, like, are there, like, You know, a lot of those are in the Archie, uh, a lot of those I are in the really? Archie comics. You know, I will tell you, they are very difficult to clear through Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, uh, but but yeah, we love when we love those uh, yeah. uh, Easter eggs and asides. Yeah, um, obviously another huge part of this season has been Hiram's arrival, uh, Mark Consuelos, uh, Marisol, and Camila. Yeah. What? How has that been to have sort of your your trio completed uh, or your you know a, a complete triangle kind of uh, uh, this season? Well, it certainly changed my character a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's been amazing. I think Mark and having Hiram there has been such an added dynamic yeah. and it's given me so much to play and, and yeah. as opposed to one note I'm usually playing three or four at the same time yeah. and yeah. I never know which way we're going yeah. um, but I just personally I've loved it because I feel like it's brought a lot of strength out in the character that you really didn't get to see mm -hmm. the first season um, and it's it's also been a great dynamic for Veronica and Hermione because yeah. their relationship has been challenged so much and I, I can't wait for what's coming yeah. I can't wait for what's coming. Do you think that she loves Hiram or is she afraid of him? Define love. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think she admires his okay. strength and his cunningness. I think she's afraid of him. Yeah. She's smart enough to be afraid of him. Yeah. And I think at one point she thought she loved him, but I don't believe she really knew him. Mm. Just my thoughts. What do you think, Roberta? Camila, what do, you, what do you think about, I mean, does Veronica, do you think, is it the same with her? Like, she loves her father, but she also is afraid of him? Or do you think she just is just a daddy's girl? Like, she's... I think she loves him. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've never doubted that. Um, and I think he loves her a lot, too. I, yeah. think, I think Veronica is precious to Hiram. Yeah. I just don't think she believes in what he's doing. And so yeah. she tries to keep one foot in darkness, one foot in goodness, yeah. and tries to find a middle ground. Because I've been, I, I was re-watching the season, and that's such an interesting dynamic because you're... Because I do think Veronica is good, but then she is, you know, she wants to be part of this family. And so this, it's this real, she seems so torn, basically. Yeah. That, must have been, that must be great to play. She like, also wants sort of... to control the family in well, yeah, her yeah. own way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what's it like working with Mark? Mark seems to have brought out a lot of, um, he's like a troublemaker, it seems like. He's like <laughs> a jokester. Like, KJ, you and Mark have, you have, like, Instagram competitions, it feels like. Or you have, like, an Instagram <laughs> joke back and forth. Yeah, um, Mark's, a, Mark's a legend. I really enjoy those scenes. That we have a lot of scenes in that study, so it can get it can get kind of boring in there. So we try and liven it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. What is it like to wrestle Mark and Suelos? <laughs> Are you asking me? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Luke, Luke for Luke. This is for Luke. Um, his bicep feels pretty good against my chin, eh? But it was, it was, uh, <laughs> he's got strong. He's pretty strong. But he he actually does a lot of wrestling. So oh, he was teaching me some stuff, and those. Those other wrestlers that we were with were actually the SFU wrestling team. Oh, wow. So they were, like, showing us the moves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's been an amazing I, addition to the yeah. cast. He's yeah. been so really He's so great. He's been great. Yeah. Um, Cole, you were kind of separate from the cast for the first half. I mean, you were, you were at Southside, obviously. Did it feel at, at all like you were on a separate show? Like, did you, was it, was it kind of, did you miss, did you miss being with the gang? <laughs> I was just glad to be away from them, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Um, no, I, I, I thought the South Side and, and the elaboration of the South Side was a really good chance for the world to grow. Yeah. And it was a great time to see what Jughead's childhood might have looked like, yeah. uh, something that he, he was very fond of. But it was also a great way to introduce the serpents, which was yeah. um, a, a huge and is still a huge part of season two. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's nice because season one, Riverdale kind of felt a little bit like a capsule, but... With every, with every episode, we realize the extent of the town is growing a little bigger and, and, and we're getting a little more depth. So I, I, love, I, I loved having the chance to be part of that lore building. Yeah. Um, and do you guys, you know, Jughead and Betty have had such an up and down. This, this year especially has been like a real like, they're, they're together, they're not together, they're not to, you know, they're back together. Do you guys have a favorite, <laughs> do you have a favorite Bughead moment from this, from this season so far? <laughs> That's it. Uh, Go. Uh, Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Guys, I got like two hours of sleep last night. <laughs> um, I don't know. What was that? Um, I don't. I don't know. I think. I think the. <laughs> Lily, I'm coming for your man. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways. That's quite a decoration. Yeah. Wow. There is. There is a moment. It, it's actually, uh, without spoiling too much, I think my favorite moment is coming up okay. in an episode. Uh, it's going to be a moment between Jughead, Betty, and Chick, which is, I, I think, which I, I think is probably my, my favorite Bughead moment of, of yes. season two. Jughead's a badass in season yeah. two. Just wait. Oh, yeah. That's good. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that to me? <laughs> I mean, we've also seen, we've seen a lot of Dark Betty. Uh, I mean, she's gotten even darker this year. Um, I love, like, my favorite, I think my favorite moment so far this year was you with the lighter up at Chick's face, just being like... Oh that oh, was... Actually, Roberto had originally written it as a feather. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. He had written it as me, like, tickling him with a feather, and I was like... <laughs> People might perceive this in a strange way. Yeah, so, he... <laughs> so I was like, how about a lighter instead? And I guess. And he saved the feather for Bughead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, thank you. Oh my God, that's my. I, I was re watching it and I was like, this is so bad. I mean, have you enjoyed. Do you like the darker part? Like, kind of learning more about Betty and sort of this other part to her? Yeah, I mean, I think it's incredibly interesting. I feel like. Um, it's so much more than just a lingerie and a black wig, which, by the way, I never want to wear again. <laughs> I hate that Why? thing. Why? Huh? I love that wig. Oh, thanks. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of, um, she's figuring out her, I feel like Dark Betty kind of represents Betty figuring out her sexuality in a way and, like, you know, becoming a woman. And then, like, when you see her real darkness, like her with a lighter in someone's face, you're like... Okay, yeah. you know, you're, yeah, I don't know, you're just kind of seeing these, this girl's inner turmoil and her demons and um, her, her little angst coming out. My little angsty girl, I love her. <laughs> Camila, you have also, though, like, Veronica's gotten pretty dark. She's gotten pretty, like, badass this year. Like, you have knocked out, I was, I've knocked out at least two <laughs> major, uh, Reggie and uh, Nick St. Clair, you've, you've yeah. taken down. Are you... Can you, are you like scrappy? Like, can you, have you gotten in a fight Veronica's before? joining the wrestling team. Yeah. <laughs> are you scrappy in real life? Like, can you throw a punch? Like, are you a, a punch? Like, you... I've never punched someone. I really want to. I'm looking to punch someone. <laughs> <laughs> Just haven't found the right person. <laughs> oh, man. Don't encourage this. <laughs> um, speaking of... Speaking of figuring out her sexuality, Madeleine, uh, Cheryl has... <laughs> you know, Cheryl obviously has had a, a, you know, a realization about her, her own sexuality. What has that been like? What's the, what's the response been like? Because it did kind of... It's a, it's a surprise in some ways, but also it feels really right. Weird, right. You know. I don't think it was a realization. You know, I think that this is something... It is something she's known for a long time, and her mom has pushed down about her and hated about her, and it's made Cheryl hate herself because her mom doesn't love her. And it's a, it was a dark storyline to kind of reveal for her, but the response was overwhelming, and I, I feel so welcomed by that community. And... I'm so happy to be able to bring that to light, and I think it's an important storyline to bring to television. Unfortunately, it's still happening, like parents not accepting their children, and it, it, was, it makes so much more sense when you see Cheryl and the way she acts towards people in season one, and the, this angst that she's built up and this anger about not being loved by her mom, therefore not loving herself. And Tony's really helping her explore that love for herself, and yeah. I think it's a really beautiful and amazing relationship. Yeah. TBD. Yeah. <laughs> And you were telling me backstage that you're best friends with Tony. So Vanessa and I have been best friends for years, by the way. So everyone's like, your chemistry is amazing. And I was like, she's my best friend. <laughs> That's, That's so crazy. That's wonderful, though. Did you guys, Roberto, did you, all, did you always know this was something you were going to pursue for Cheryl? It's some, I, I think we had conversations about it uh, 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 early on. It was, it was something uh, that, we, that we talked, and when, when we introduced the character of Tony Topaz, uh, uh, we thought, oh, this is a bisexual character. That, that kind of from the, again, from the comic books. 
uh, uh, and we, we talked about it early on. It took a little bit, a, a little while to get to the storyline, but I think, and you, the, the episode that you guys haven't seen, I think is really powerful. It's the one that airs this Wednesday, so please tune in and watch it live. Um, um, but it's, it really, it, it, it's a powerful episode between Cheryl and Tony. Um, um, so, so yeah, it is something we thought about for a while. Yeah. yeah. Nice to see it, it come to fruition. Yeah. Um, uh, Skeet and Machen, are you shocked? I mean, <laughs> I feel like there is so much fan support for FP and Alice to get together. <laughs> <laughs> Which would make like the bughead situation real weird. But um, <laughs> uh, Wel welcome to Riverdale. That's true. Yeah, right. You're right. That's true. You gotta so, set an example. <laughs> <laughs> But it, what's, I mean, have you gotten, I mean, you must, do people come up to you and are they, are they shipping? Are you getting people like really shipping oh, yeah. Alice, Alice and FP? Oh yeah, we have, we have major phallus shippers. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you all. Wait, they're called phallus? Uh, I was phallus. <laughs> I was not, I was not aware of that. Get, get that. on board, like get on the ship. Wow, um, Al and Machen, are we gonna see, will we learn more about Alice's, I love the idea of Alice as a serpent, like that, the biker, ch biker chick Alice is my favorite part. Mm. Are we, yeah. Are we gonna learn more about that? Roberto? Oh, okay. Um, um, I, have to, I have to do one more plug for this week's Riverdale. It's also a big uh, episode for Alice, the Serpents, and FP. Yeah. And if people are interested in seeing more of FP and Alice, I, I think you should watch this week's episode. Oh, wonderful. Oh my gosh. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to create it on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Everyone loves Phallus. Um, uh, <laughs> that is the quote. You never thought that you'd say that. I know, I never thought I'd say that on a large stage. Well, to... I probably did. Um, <laughs> but Skeet, were, like, did you, Skeet, you were also um, kind of in a different, you were in a, almost a different show. You were like on Oz, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. Was that, uh, how, I mean, were you, did you have FOMO? Like, were you like, I gotta get back with the gang. I've been gone too, I've been in prison too long. I don't think I met anyone until this year. <laughs> like, Cole. Like, yeah, I was kind of stuck out there and, and nowhere land yeah. um but it's been uh, it's such a great group of people so it's always nice when we have those big scenes where we're all together yeah. for all of us to catch up and be around each other it's always it's always nice so yeah. i was glad to join the main part of the show yeah <laughs> and marisol and luke what kind of campaign can we expect from these two because obviously you guys have a very complicated relationship um, is this gonna be ugly, dirty? What's it gonna, I mean, how's this gonna go between- I think it uh, depends on who Hermione. you ask. I, I mean, I think having Fred run against Hermione is her worst nightmare, like <laughs> right in her face. Yeah. But I would say, and pipe in, but I think Hermione has more of a political savvy kill or be killed instinct. And unfortunately, yeah. he's her opponent. Yeah. yeah, she's looking to make Riverdale great again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, believing that Riverdale's always been great, and it's going to get greater when I'm the mayor. Thank you. Oh. We'll see. Uh, Ashley, we've learned so much more about Josie this year, which has been so awesome, I think. Um, Out of the ballpark. Michael. And now it looks oh. like... Did you and Madeline, I, my favorite scenes are the Madeline, uh, uh, or you and Madeline, sort of the Cheryl, Josie, um, I don't even know how to describe that relationship. Um, was that fun, was that a fun storyline to, to be able to do? Go for it, girl. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always great working with Madeline. Mads is just like an awesome actress and an awesome human being, and she's, she gives so much, and it, it's actually kind of hard to be mad at her. Like, when I have to be mad, I can't, like, cause she just, like, does weird faces. She does a smile, like, it's weird, little, like, that one, that one, that's my face! <laughs> Gets me every time. <laughs> love her. I love working with Ashley. Um, it's honestly a dream come true. And she's got the voice of an angel, by the way. That duet, I can't, Mom, I mean, her voice duet. is, she sings like that in person. <laughs> that's not normal. But she's, she's a phenomenal scene partner and I'm so happy that we've got to delve into that relationship more because that was kind of like the one thing we were saying at the beginning of the season was like, yeah. you'll see more Chosie. Yeah. And you have. 
Gerald? 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 Chelsea? Gerald? You, you tell us, but. Um, and then the, for the, let's go back to the, the Black Hood stuff. Um, is, did you know, like, when you started this season did, for Roberto, did you know who the Black Hood was, or is this something that's kind of, has this evolved over the course of the season? You know, when we, when we started, we had, um, we had three uh, likely suspects. Interesting. So for the first half of the season, we, we kind of were, were writing it, um, always dropping red herrings so that, so that we kind of could, could, could uh, pick. As we moved into the second half and when we got, get back to the Black Hood for the last few episodes, we always knew it wasn't going to be just the um, uh, Mr. Spence right. and the janitor. Mrs. I know. Uh, uh, Poor man. Uh, uh, <laughs> but but for, the last, for the last 10 episodes or so, we've, we've had a pretty clear idea okay. and have been writing towards that. Okay. Have the, for the actors, like, were you nervous at all that you might be the Black Hood? Like, do you know if you're the Black Hood? Very. I, yeah, I was 40 year old. No. <laughs> I knew I don't have green eyes. You knew what? I knew that I don't have green eyes. Oh, that's true. Girl, you could be wearing contacts. <laughs> true. You never know. I thought true. Hiram might have, might have hired someone or something. Yeah. You never know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We find out at this pretty much at the very last minute anyway. Yeah. No, I was absolutely sure I was not the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> Were you... Was there any fear, though, because people are dropping like flies now, um, <laughs> and was, I mean, w did, uh, are you guys afraid of being killed off at all? Like, has that been, have you been, have there been assurances made? Well, the thing I would say to the first part of your question is, people keep dropping off. Riverdale has a specific gravity, okay? <laughs> and it's, it's hard to hang in the Yeah, orbit. but people always come back is the thing. That's true. So. Oh, and that, what a stud move, like to bring Barkley oh, back. Yeah, as, as Uncle character. Claudius. I, that's oh, my so, gosh. It's so brilliant, right? You know, to bring Barkley Hope, the actor who, who, who played Clifford Blossom, to bring him back as Cornelius. As twin brother. Cornelius? Cornelius. 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 There's a third Cornelius. twin. There's a third twin, Cornelius. 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 That's how it was just born. Yeah. Yeah. See? Oh, my God. But that's how smart... The, yes. These guys are with it. Yeah. Yeah. Will the wig room come back? Because that's my favorite. My favorite set you guys no. ever had was the Blossom you know, like, toupee it, room. It's, it's funny. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> I love that. That was wonderful. I, I loved it too. Originally, that was born out of the fact that Barclay, the actor who played uh, Cheryl's father, did not want to dye his hair red. Oh, nice. And so we're like, that's okay. We'll put him in a in a, in a wig. Yeah. So we put him in a wig. <laughs> And there were a lot of questions about the wig. Many people <laughs> thought it didn't look real. Um, um, and, and we got a lot of notes from the studio and the network that said, you know, this wig is crazy. Why is he wearing her wig? And then I actually have to say it was, I think, Greg Berlani who had the idea that we should make it a, a character trait that he has a room yes. full of, yes. uh, of wigs like, like Lex Luthor. So that's how the wig, yeah. that's how the wig room was born. Yeah, life gives you lemons and you make yes. a wig room. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Bam. God bless you, Greg Berlanti. Yeah. You're so wise. You're just, uh, that's why you are who you are. Because you knew we needed a wig room. Uh, <laughs> do you guys feel like this season, though, has been, to me, it's been such a game changer. Like, you, it feels like you're on, there's such momentum and just... The, the mystery has been so great, and the, you, I mean, the musical episode, there's just been so many great moments. Do you feel, does it feel different? Does it feel like a, 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 a different kind of, does it feel like a, ground, a, a game changer for you all? Yeah, absolutely. I think 22, like, our last season obviously was 13 episodes, and now that we have 22 this time, it's a ride for sure. Like, yeah. we, we weren't, we, none of us knew what it was like. I mean, we had Luke, who's made over 300 episodes of TV, and he was telling us, like, this is what it's going to be like. It's going to be hard. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, it was, it's hard. It's challenging. It is yeah. it's really hard. But, um, you know, I think we're all really proud of what we've done thus totally. far. And also, I feel like it's different to do that, but it's also exactly the same. You know what mm. I mean? Like, we're still with the same people. We're still that same support group. We're still there for each other. Yeah. Uh, and the story is just different. Yeah. There's just a lot more to play with this yeah. season, too. Mm -hmm. Like, with all of our characters are growing, and we're growing with them. And... We have different genres we get to experience. Yeah. I mean, I, at the rap party, I read Roberto's speech, and he kind of touched on all the genres we've touched on in the show. And it's fun. You don't get to do that in a lot of shows. Yeah. And what was the, I mean, it felt like, too, I think you guys, you guys premiered, and, uh, you know, everyone loved it. And then you went on Netflix this summer, and it did sort of, it seems like the audience even grew massively. Have you noticed, or is it, did you notice that change, like fans mm -hmm. coming up to you and just more people seeing it and um, wanting to talk about it? What is Netflix? Yeah. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> I mean, there was a significant difference. Yeah. In, um, in I guess our 
followers and you know people recognizing us as soon as we went on Netflix. I mean, that's just how people watch mm -hmm. TV these days and digest their content. So it, we kind of just grew exponentially from there, yeah. which was amazing. But it was something like we were totally not prepared for. Yeah. So what's it like now in Vancouver? Like, can you walk around Vancouver normally? No. No. I mean, you no, can walk. Like you're, okay. just, you're gonna get stopped. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The problem is, is that we're also always together. Yeah. So right. it really, like it's, there's no question if it's us, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a redhead, a brunette, a blonde, a tall, dark head man. <laughs> like it's just all. I yeah. can walk around obvious. Vancouver. And what's great is that people will get as close to me as Cole with their mouth open and say, are you? <laughs> if you're that close, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> What's been your wildest fan encounter so far? Have you had anyone yet, like, tattoo you on their bodies? Oh, God. Because that will probably happen. Luke, you probably had that happen. Luke, there's, there are Dylan McKay tattoos out there. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it, it's funny you would pick that one, Tim, because yeah. I've seen a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few. I have, well, I have one. I'll show it later. Show it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... Tell them about the stamps. The stamps in, in Africa, right? Oh, yeah. The other day, uh, the crew had a uh, jigsaw puzzle out of oh. me, and they were putting it together <laughs> on, <laughs> on a big table. And uh, Camille and I got to talking about stuff, and I showed her a picture of, I'm a postage stamp in Africa. <laughs> wow. If you, 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 you send mail out of there, oh, boys. Luke on that. <laughs> I just never, I, that's crazy to me. Does that not sound crazy to you? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But have you guys, for the, the Riverdale, uh, the younger kids, did they, have they, have you guys had crazy experiences? I yeah. mean, just really? the other day, um, I found myself in Vancouver going to Chipotle a lot, um, sure. which is not out of the ordinary. But so I, I, I went there the other day and this girl was opening the door for me and she goes, <laughs> and I was like, she's like, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's me. She goes, good luck with that. <laughs> I don't know if she thought that I was like pretending to be me, but then she was like, okay. I, <laughs> she was saying good luck with the Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Fair. It's Roman Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, what? Yeah. So what? next no, season, Jughead will be eating Chipotle for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so you guys mentioned you guys all hang out together all the time. What? Give me like, what's a Riverdale weekend? Like, what is like? Give me like, what do you guys do for fun? Karaoke, Work. baby. Karaoke a lot. Okay. Mark's house. <laughs> what is your karaoke song? I don't want to talk about it. If I ain't got you. <laughs> If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. Which one? Well, if I Ain't no, Got You by that, Alicia Keys. That song from Shrek, what do we, I'll start. Right. Somebody <laughs> once told me. Well, yeah. Casey's not here, but Casey always sings New York State of Mind, right? Yeah, and he oh. kills it. Um, Lady Gaga, queen over here, yeah. sings oh, Phenomenal I Gaga. I Lady Gaga, she's my girl. What's the song we do? <laughs> we do You and I. You and I, that's our song. Oh, that's great. What's the song that you and I do? Oh, oh it's you God. and I. You oh, and yeah. Cole likes to sing Mr. Brightside. <laughs> oh, man, do you know this stuff? I know. I'm, I, I go to karaoke. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, all right, well, we're going to take uh, audience Q&As. So if you um, have a question, you oh, have to find a, We have to go to the uh, person with the microphone. Yeah, and I have to point this out. I always love to do it. I went to high school with that gentleman right there Did with the really? microphone in his hand. Oh, really? Woo! Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my good friend, Mr. John Wareham. Oh, my God, oh, yes. Went right. the same let's go to John then. John, let's go. Yeah, we'll go to the, yeah. Love it. God, it's it's I'm freezing. Look at this. Hi, everybody. Um, I have I to say I love bumps. the entire cast, but, ooh, my heart's pounding. As I'm sitting here, my 16, 18-year-old self is fangirling a little bit over Skeet and Luke, so. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge fan from years back, but, um. That's not the role I'm in today. I'm at here as a mother because oh, cool. I got, yay. Um, I got my 12 year old daughter Mia into the show and she was like, I don't know mom, comics. And cause I was a huge Archie comics fan growing up. 
Yeah. Um, and we all were. from the first episode, I realized this ain't your mama's Archie comics, right? <laughs> um, but now she's a huge fan. We're a huge fan together. And it's so special for uh, us to be able to share this love of the show and to be here today. So thank you guys so much for providing that. And Greg, we're huge fans of a lot of your shows. We were here last year for the superhero panel. But I really want to know, how did this come to fruition? Whose idea was it to bring Riverdale? Whose idea was it to make it dark and twisty? Okay, good. <laughs> so thank you guys. Um, you know, it was, some, it was, it was something that, that uh, I'd been writing Archie comics and it's something that, that John Goldwater and I had, had talked about um, uh, uh, a lot and, and dreamed about a lot. And we spent, I think, maybe two or three years trying to do an Archie movie. And, and we, we couldn't make it happen for a lot of reasons. And then um, um, uh, 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 we thought, well, maybe we'll try this as a television show. And we, we partnered with um, Greg Berlanti and, and Sarah Schechter and his company. Uh, uh, and as we were developing it, uh, a lot of people said, you know, you're, it's, it can't, it's got to be more than just a coming of age show. It's really hard to just do a coming of age show. And then it's sort of, and which is what I thought it was going to be. I thought every episode was going to be like the musical. I thought it was going to be a bunch of kids singing in the cafeteria. And, and it, it sort of evolved into something that, that became kind of almost um, a subversion or a deconstruction of Archie, uh, uh, something that was darker and more noir and crime. And it, it's just sort of kind of, it, it just happened sort of naturally. Uh, but it came out of years of hard work and a lot of people believing it. I, uh, I think she's here right now, Susan Rovner at Warner Brothers Television. Uh, when, I, when I walked into her office, it was the first time I was, I was going to talk to her about Archie. I'd never met her, and before I even sat down, she said, we're doing this, it's a high school show, it's gonna be on the CW, it's gonna be a huge hit. And I'm like, uh, okay, I don't even have to sell it to you. So it was a lot of people really believed in it. Peter Roth, when, when the show uh, died at Fox, he believed in it, and, and, and we took it out again, and it landed exactly where it should be, which is on, on the CW. So, so a lot of people really believed in it. Let's go to the, the, guy, the lady in the middle with the, big, the bell sleeves. Yeah. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to point people out. This is hard. Bell sleeves is good. First of all, we love you so much. And our question is, what's your favorite memory you've had on set? Wow. Mm. I think I go. No. Okay, I don't know. Go ahead, go. I was just going to say um, the season finale of season one. Yep, I was going to say the exact same thing. Really? Yeah. It was just such an, there, we've never had a, a shoot day like that before when we're all just like running in the snow, freezing cold, but also like the adrenaline was so high. Um, and... It was an epic moment. I don't think a and lot of moments compare to that one. Yeah, and we all came together and <laughs> uh, AJ hey, broke guys, his hand. You guys didn't and... break your hand that day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's we what was all, so like, epic to about it. We were each other up and yeah, yeah. It was like a little warm and cuddly. And also sad, but <laughs> warm and cuddly. <laughs> all right, cool. Let's go. This lady in the front row with the yellow shirt. Hi there. Uh, my name is Jansen. Uh, so I have a question. I'm wearing a pop shirt. Um, do you guys have a favorite milkshake, or do you actually get to drink them, or oh what's that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first season, they were like weird, like it tastes like Pedialyte. It was like Pedialyte. Yeah. I was like, I didn't. No. I was like, I didn't drink this as a kid. I'm not drinking it now. <laughs> My personal favorite is a coffee milkshake. Mm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but Betty drinks they, vanilla. Yeah, I thought they always make or strawberry. strawberry yeah. I don't know. I always have to drink chocolate. I think it's strawberry, actually. But we try not to, like, we have to shoot a lot of those scenes. I don't actually drink And it. a lot of takes of them. So we try not to even touch the straw, honestly. <laughs> I get the cool whip off. I finish mine before we start. Yeah, KJ yeah. drinks it, like, immediately. No, if and he'll he eat does. yours, too. We, we, first time I worked with KJ, we had a scene where KJ and Cole were supposed to be eating a pizza in the living room. They ate the entire pizza during rehearsal. <laughs> We, we hadn't even got to shooting yet. Pizza gone. They had <laughs> pizza waiting. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, this lady, the lady in the front, she was like, or, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, we love you guys. 
Hi, um, I'm Kendall Weiss, and this is Bella Flint. And I love you so much. Your show is amazing. And we were just wondering if you ever had an experience where you had to improv one of your scenes. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, since KJ doesn't remember any of his lines, pretty much it's all improv. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. So the answer is yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I, I do think, you know, when we get the script, uh, most of the times it's kind of theoretical. And, in, and until the actors live inside the set with it and start to translate it into their own, into their own words, the scripts change and the scripts adapt. And, and in that kind of way, there's a lot of improvisation that goes on for almost every scene. And it's about finding out what words make the character sound. Uh, th th thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, the answer is yes. There's a ton of improvisation. Yeah, there's, uh, no, the improv comes after, sometimes the director doesn't call cut right at the end of the scene. And yeah. He'll leave it on purpose to see what happens. <laughs> It's more improv with choices, not necessarily improv yeah, with right. words. We don't, we, they're pretty strict about us sticking to the exact words. Yeah. Exact. In a good way. It's a stylized show. You got to get it right. All right, let's go to the second, the back area. Um, this, this, uh, you, you, we'll, there's a man with a glasses. Yeah, there's, there's a man. man. Black, there's a man yeah. with there's glasses. Man. I don't, I can't, I don't just have to tell these people. I'm sorry. Will Pretty Archie sure. and the core group, the Archie and the gang, will they stay in high school forever? Or do you have plans for them to move on to college or adult life? I asked the same forever. Forever. It's only been like four Plus months. Seven. What year are they now? Sophomores. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it like, it's it's like first junior? semester, no. sophomore year. Exactly. <laughs> you, you can stay in school a long time on yeah. TV. Now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. There's like a young kid, a young boy with in a black T-shirt, I think. Yep. Is it a girl? Sorry, sorry, I can't see. I can't see. No, you're adorable. You're adorable. I love the show so much. I can't much. see. Sorry. Um, so Cole and Lily, there's been a lot of rumors of you guys dating. Oh. <laughs> Are you dating? Was that, a question? Was that the question or the statement? Because you're right. <laughs> huh? Are you dating? <laughs> no comment. Okay. <laughs> I just mumbled into the mic. All right, let's, let's do the guy. Or let's do the guy wow. in the far back in the eight. Yeah, sense. the eight. Thanks for not answering. Or nine? Is it a nine? Yeah. I don't know. Good job. It's eight. Don't I can't it. see. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for an awesome panel. I'm a huge fan myself of Riverdale. Um, I have a question for the entire yeah, cast. As a millennial who wants to go into the television and entertainment industry, what advice do you have? I'm not necessarily trying to act, but just, you know, for any of it. Move to Vancouver. <laughs> 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 It's a hard industry to get into regardless of what area you want to be in. And I think the biggest piece of advice I could give to myself back then and to anybody is just stay tenacious and don't give up. It could take four months, it could take ten years, but if you really love it, just keep doing it and stay passionate and it will happen. Yeah, and use, and a, use a washout dye for your hair, don't bleach it. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we're, I mean, we're a perfect example. We're all from completely different places. We all yeah. got here with that. Exactly. I, right. I yeah. do think that there there's a myth that follows around the industry that it's kind of like a light switch success, that all of a sudden that there's this, this big break and all of a sudden you're in. And I, uh, what, what's true in most cases is, and what's true for most of us sitting on this stage, is years and years of smaller roles or commercial work or background work and slow and steady paces up to something that becomes a real commercial success. Totally. And so I think, take it with a grain of salt. I, I, what the audience ends up seeing in most cases is your biggest successes. And only after you, you become quite successful in the industry do people go back and in their own sort of archaeological way filter through the stuff that they can find. Uh, little hidden stuff, hidden gems that you used to do. So be proud of the little stuff that you do. 
be, be proud of, of the small steps that it takes to eventually lead into one of those bigger roles because it, it takes a long time and it, it's not just a light switch. Okay, these, these, we only have time for a few more. My name's Sam, this is Noelle. Hi. And since we're at the home of the Oscars, I was wondering, who are you guys wearing? Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, this is Free People. I am, yeah. Michael Kors. This is uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Self-portrait. Armani. Allison Olivia. Right. <laughs> Ooh, for the Let's see this girl, this, uh, yeah, she has a denim shirt on, yeah, and she's holding cards. Poker player, denim shirt, yep. cards, <laughs> gotta be. Um, I'll stand, very tall, sorry. Um, also, shout out to the redheads on stage. Uh, yes, love you, I actually have stuff for you guys. I got a veggie girl gift card from Madeline. <laughs> So that's awesome. Uh, so my question on the topic of food is, what is your guys' go-to snack, like, on set? Mm. Oh. Oh, chocolate pears. Anything. Yep, you love your pears, don't you? <laughs> I like nut and seed butter. Mm-hmm. That it's one's by good. Itself? It's real good. With a pear. Potentially with a pear, <laughs> maybe by itself if I need you a little protein. You guys are describing hamster food. <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially what Crafty is. <laughs> no. No. Go to, what's your go-to food? Corey? You don't you snack see my outfits. Food. I, they, so Canada has these ketchup chips. Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. Which are pretty M &Ms. good. They're disgusting. Yeah, M&M's. Um, yeah. I make a grilled cheese. We have a whole setup at Crafty and I'll pop my toast in there and some cheese and some banana peppers. <laughs> I make a meal at Crafty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. week. Uh, well, we actually have, that's all the time we have left, but um, you guys, thanks so much for the cast. Oh. 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 But thank you all. Oh, my God. <laughs>